Hello, welcome to Just Vintage Crochet. Let's dive into a mystery pattern. If you are new to the channel, I have a stack of patterns here that were compiled for me, so I did not pick these patterns out. My son did, and to the best of his ability, he went through and blacked out everything that could give away what the pattern is, so it is a true mystery. We don't have any titles or pictures to go on, no context, just the words that are written down in front of us. Of course, later on in the reveal, we will have titles and pictures. I just don't have access to those until I'm done. All right, let's pick our pattern. Not many here to go off of. What do we have? Here we go, number 15, second to the top. Okay, it says here that we need a Millward's steel crochet hook, number seven. And then that's it. Um, then it goes into gauge. He probably blocked all this out because it might have given away what the what the pattern is. So we don't have any. We don't. Our only indication of the material size that we need is the hook number seven. Starting at center, chain ten, join with the slip stitch to form a ring. First round, chain three to count as a double crochet. Okay, so this is a US pattern, chain three, double crochet. It's a US written pattern. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and of course it's from 1941. Let's see here, make a PC. Oh, to make a PC stitch, chain one, make five, double crochet. Popcorn, oh, popcorn. Okay, I already know what they're gonna say. Five double crochet, they're gonna say to drop the loop. And in her, okay, so we're doing popcorns. Okay, so PC is gonna be popcorn. All right. Um, repeat from until eight popcorn stitch is completed. Join, okay, so we're gonna make eight popcorns. Oh, well, let's just get started. My goodness, I'm reading this and I'm not working. So to continue to give my fingers a break from the tiny hooks, I am gonna, I'm still gonna use a thread. It's just gonna be a bit thicker than a number seven hook calls for. A number seven hook would be a number 10 bedspread cotton. I'm gonna go a little bit thicker than that. This is about a number five. So it's just one size up. And I'm going to try out a 3.75 hook. If it's too big, I'll bump that down to a 3.5. So I don't know if this is still available. It's from Lion Brand. It is Mandala String. It is wonderful stuff. Here is how it color changes. I've used it one other time, maybe two other times on this channel, and everybody just fell in love with it every time I used it because of these beautiful, subtle color changes. I don't know if this is still available. I got lucky and happened to find this on Amazon. So here is what it's called. Here is what the packaging looks like. If you get lucky and find it on Amazon, snatch it up because Lion Brand does not make this anymore and it is beautiful. It is not cotton though, it is acrylic. Okay, let's get started. Right, so it wants us to start with a chain of 10 and create a ring. Then we are going to start making our popcorn stitches. Two, three, I think that seems all right four, five, six. Now let me try the 3.5 just to see if it's a little bit tighter and neater without, without the string popping. Sometimes if you go too small with the hook, your string will pop. Your thread will pop off your hook. It's very annoying. Seems like it has a pretty good hold. One, two, three, four, five, six. We might go with this one actually. This is creating cleaner stitches with this small thread yes let's try even smaller this this is the process of elimination you know let's try even smaller i do actually have a three i almost jumped down to a 3.25 well i don't know i have a three and a 3.25 let's try 3.25 now this is typically what i do off camera but as of late, I've been doing this on camera more just so that you get the idea of just the process of elimination and how to work out these older patterns to your liking. And that's an even cleaner line. Let's try the three. I wouldn't go smaller than three because then you're, it already, it's already showing the three is just a little too small. Let's give it a go anyway. 
The three and the 3.25 don't look too far apart. They don't really look that different. And I think with the 3.25, my hook would not pop. I'm gonna go with the 3.25 because they look the same. They feel the same. And this wants to catch much better on the hook. So there we go. I'm using a 3.25 and a size one super fine thread. All right, chain 10, and we're going to form a ring. There we go. And now it says, first round, chain three to count as a double crochet. Then the repeat starts with, make a popcorn stitch in the ring. And these are gonna be five double crochet popcorn stitches. Now, do they want me to include that chain three as a popcorn stitch? Okay, probably not. I'm gonna assume not. No, because it says chain one, Karina Reed. Okay, chain one, then make a five double crochet. Some patterns only call for a four double crochet popcorn stitch. So this one calls for a five. So we're going to chain three. Uh, just for the sake of neatness, I'm actually going to go ahead and work a stacked single. So there we go. And I have a multitude of videos that teach how to make a stacked single. So now chain one and work a five double crochet popcorn stitch. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, pick up that loop and complete it. And there we go. That is a popcorn stitch. Okay, now it wants us to make a total of eight of them, if I recall. Do I have to chain one though in between? You always have to chain one to lock the popcorn stitch in so that doesn't really count as a chain one. That's just how you complete the popcorn stitch. Chain one, we do need to chain one, okay. So we make a double crochet, chain one, and make a popcorn stitch. One, two, three, four, and five. Draw up a loop, go into the first double crochet made, pull the loop through, lock it in, make a double crochet, chain one, popcorn stitch. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna work all eight of these off camera. Working on my last popcorn stitch now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's tighten this ring up a little bit. And then we join to the top of either the chain three or the stacked singles, if you are following along. Get on in there now. There you go. Okay, let's see what we have next. Oh, I'm gonna need a little sticky note. So that's better, okay. Second round, chain three, make two double crochet in the same space as the slip stitch. And I just saw the word holding, so I should not, I should continue to read. Holding back on the hook, the last loop of each double crochet. Thread over and draw through all loops on the hook, a cluster made. Okay, so it wants us to chain three. I may actually have to chain three this time. One, two, and I'm actually just gonna chain two. I don't like starting clusters with a chain three because it makes the chain three too baggy. Yarn over and into the same stitch, and I'll show you the difference, okay. Here we go, there is our chain three, and then if we were to start with a starting cluster as it's asking us to do, that's gonna be two incomplete double crochets, just like this and then pull through all three. And now it looks like it's it's going this way. It's like too much over here. Let me show you how it looks with just two. It's just my personal preference. Okay, 
back in there and create one half done. Already they're the same height, do you see? Yarn over and create the second half complete double crochet. It already looks bright. Pull through all and it just looks better, in my opinion. In my opinion. Okay, uh, chain three, three double crochet in the same place as last cluster was made. Uh, holding back on the hook, the last loop of each. Okay, so make another cluster. Thread over and draw through all loops on the hook. Now this time there's gonna be four loops on the hook instead of three. Um, another cluster made. Okay, so we're gonna do cluster V stitches. So we're gonna have a chain three between the clusters. Here we go. Yeah, this little stitch here is, it's a little tight to get into. There we go. One. Two. And three. And you can see, minus this one right here, doesn't this look exactly like our starting cluster where everything is the same uniform height? That's just why I prefer to do a chain two with starting clusters as opposed to a chain three. And it's the same if you have to start with a treble cro crochet cluster. Omit your fourth chain and start with three instead of four. It just always looks better, in my opinion. Okay. Another cluster made. Chain two, skip the next popcorn stitch, three double crochet, and next double crochet. Chain two, skip the popcorn stitch, and I can't tell what that is. Skip the popcorn stitch in next, and then in, okay, then in next double crochet, make the two clusters with the three chained between. Repeat from here. Okay, so now we chain two, and we skip the popcorn, and into the double crochet right here, we make three double crochet. One, two, three, okay, three double crochet, okay, then it says to chain two, skip the next popcorn, three double crochet in the next double crochet, chain two, skip the next popcorn, and then in the next double crochet, we're going to do the cluster V stitch, so chain two, and in the next double crochet over between the popcorns, we're going to make our next cluster, one, or should I say cluster V stitch, two, three, pull through all four, chain three, one, two, three, pull through all four, chain two, skip the next popcorn, and in the double crochet between, we work three double crochet, one, two, three, chain two, between the next two clusters, we work our, I'm sorry, between the next two popcorns, in that double crochet, we work our cluster V stitch. Two, although I suspect these are corners, I feel like, look at how it's squaring out. I think these, these um, cluster V stitches are our corners. I think that we are making some form of a square. Look how that, look at that beautiful color change though. Just a moment, Merlin's gonna bark. Mr. Merlin barks at everyone that comes in, but if you notice this gorgeous colorway, I'm telling you, if you have a chance to get your hands on this, and the color is, specifically this color, I fell in love with this color. It's called Ballad 557, here's 216 AA. I don't know if those numbers mean anything. Here we go, article, color, number. Okay, it's called Ballad and it is gorgeous. I'm telling you, this color changes everything. I'm gonna link a video down below where I made this gorgeous 1800s uh, quilt square, crocheted it. It was a rose quilt square with this color, chef's kiss. It's as if that color, it's as if this color was made specifically for that pattern. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. Chain three, and then another cluster. These are the kind of materials you get so excited to get your hands on. Chain two, and we're gonna work 
three double crochet. One, two, three, chain two, and we're gonna work, I'm gonna just call it, it's a corner, so we're gonna work another corner in the next double crochet over. One, two, three, and unless this is specifically for a something small like a tablecloth, which it, it very well could be, I'm not sure, but if it's for a bedspread, if this winds up being a bedspread square, which let's be real, tablecloth squares, armchair squares, they can all be bedspread squares. Um, you can use a much thicker uh, yarn and, and like a cotton yarn and a hook with this so you don't have to kill your hands with the thread. And it'll work up so much faster too. All right, now work my three double crochet. One, two, but 1941, this is either uh, some kind of entrance way, table runner. This is gonna be a tablecloth, although maybe not with these lumps here. This is probably gonna be a bedspread. We've done so many of these. We've gotten so good at guessing. Chain two, and I'm gonna join into the top of the first cluster made. There we go. I absolutely adore the color changes with this material. Okay, third round. Slip stitch in next space. Chain three and complete a cluster in space as before. Chain three, cluster in same space as, okay, so making it, we're making corners. Um, okay, yeah, we're gonna make a corner in the corner. So we'll slip stitch over, and I'm gonna start with a chain two instead of a chain three. One and two, there we go, chain three. Oops. Having a slight yarn bar situation here. <laughs> Let's complete this, I'm gonna call it a corner. I feel extremely confident in that. So let's complete this corner. Well, by golly, I'm all twisted about. With another cluster. One, two, and three. There we go. Okay. Same place. Okay, now we start the repeat. Chain two, two double crochet in next space. Chain two, two double crochet in next space. One, two, okay. Two double crochet in next space. Double crochet in next three double crochet. All right, so now we work across. Oh, sounds like Merlin's going to bark again. My husband just pulled up. There he goes. He's going down the hallway. <laughs> nope. He's going to stay here to make sure he's as loud as possible. <laughs> I'm going to have to pause in a moment. Um, three, okay, double crochet in next three double crochet. Two double crochet in next space. Chain two in next space between the clusters. Make two clusters with a chain three. Make a corner. Then repeat from here. Very simple instructions. Okay, so two double crochet into the next space. And we're gonna chain two. Make our cluster corners. One, two, three, chain three. And again, one, two, Three. Yeah, if this is a bedspread, it'll work up so fast with thicker yarn. Okay, so I just anticipate Merlin's going to bark any moment. Two double crochet, one, two, three double crochet, two double crochet. That's going to be a total of three, four, five, six, seven double crochet in a row. Here we go. One, two, three, four five, six, and seven, chain two, work a cluster corner. One, 
two and three, chain three and one, two and three. There we go. Then we chain two and work our seven double crochet in a row again. I'm going to go ahead and pause and work this off camera so Marlin can, Marlin, Marlin can get it out of his system. My husband's bringing groceries in. <laughs> I'm going to end this round with a chain two and join into the top of my starting cluster. There we go. Now let's move on to the next round. Okay. So moving on to the fourth round, slip stitch into the space, chain three, and complete the cluster. Space as before, chain three, cluster in same space. So make a corner. Now the repeat starts, chain two, two double crochet in the space, double crochet in the next seven double crochet, two in the next space, chain two, and then basically work our cluster corner. Repeat all around ending with a chain two and join. So it's basically the last round just with more double crochets between the corners. Here we go, one, two, one and two, one, two, three, one, two and three, chain two, and into this chain two space here, you can see we have chain two space, seven doubles chain two space. So now we're gonna increase by a total of four double crochet on these sides. So that's one, two, seven, and then two more here. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Then we chain two and we work our cluster corners. One, two, three, chain three, one, two, three, and there we go, chain two, and start working our doubles again, starting in the first chain two space. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete this all around, and I will be right back. Okay, ending this round with a chain two, and then slip stitch into the top of our starting cluster. There we go. That's starting to look very nice and I'm really loving that warm, subtle color change. I almost said cuddle change. <laughs> subtle and cuddle. Okay, moving on to the fifth round, slip stitch into the space. Work a cluster corner. Okay, and then our repeat is chain two and two double crochet into the space, double crochet into the next five. So we are gonna change it up this time a little bit. Okay, let's start with our cluster corner. Chain two and complete a cluster. One and two. One, two, three. One, two, three chain two, and it said two double crochet into the space. One, two, okay. Two double crochet in the space, double crochet in the next five, double crochet, popcorn stitch in the next double crochet. Okay, here we go. Now it makes sense why we did 11, an odd number. One, two, three, because I read also that it's uh, five double crochet after the popcorn. So that's four, five, into the next stitch we work a cluster. One, two, three, four, and five. Yep. 
Now we work five double crochet and I'm guessing two into the space. Two, three, four, and five. And I'm just guessing two into the space followed by our cluster corner, but I'll look at it just to double check. If, uh, double crochet in the next five double crochet, popcorn stitch in the next double crochet in the next five double crochet, two in the next space, chain two in the space between the clusters, make a cl basically make our cluster corner and then repeat all around. Okay, so chain two and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, chain two, two into the space, one, two, five in a row, one, two, three, four, and five, work a popcorn, one, Two, three, four, and five. There we go. And repeat. Okay, so I'm going to work this all around, and of course, I will be right back. Okay, let's move on to the next round, and that is round six. And it says here, we're going to basically create our cluster corner. The repeat is uh, chain two, two double crochet in the space, double crochet in the next five doubles, popcorn in the next stitch, double, double in the next, double behind the popcorn of the previous round, uh, and then double in the next, Popcorn, I'm sorry, popcorn in the next and then double in the next five. And then we work our corner. Okay. So here we go. One, two, that was chain two. Now we will work two doubles. One, two, one double into each of the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. Work a popcorn. So what I'm going to do is ignore the chain one and just work. This is going to be because it said to work a double behind the popcorn. I may actually ignore this and work into the chain one because the chain one is going to be firmer. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, yes. Okay. Work a double in the next double. Work a double behind the popcorn, and I think I'm going to work that one. See, here's my actual technical top of the stitch, but I'm going to go ahead and work it into this chain one right here just because it's a firmer stitch. See how that looks. I might change my mind. We're allowed to do that. Mm, that creates too much of a gap, I think. So let's try. let's try the intended way. You know, it never hurts to at least try. Then we're supposed to put a double into the next double. See if that creates any kind of a gap. I imagine that chain one, regardless, will create some level of a gap. That's fine. It's unavoidable. Then we work another popcorn. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. One, two, three, four, yeah. 
Then we work into the next five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. And then two into the chain two space. One, two, chain two, and work our cluster corner. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this all around. Yes. There we go. And I will be right back. Really, that chain one is avoidable. I've never worked a popcorn stitch without securing it with a chain one. I just worked these two stitches without securing it with a chain one first. And I'll show you that. Just because I don't like the ugly gaps. So I'm learning something new today. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four. And I'm just not gonna chain one. I'm just gonna yarn over and into the very next stitch, start working my doubles. And there is no gap. Now let's see here. One, two, three. So this would be the top of the popcorn stitch here. We'll see how that works out the next, the next go around, but I'm going to work this whole round without chaining one to lock in the popcorns. It's, they don't seem to a hundred percent need it, if at all. My whole life has been a lie. <laughs> They do allow the popcorns to stand up straight though. These, I, I have to keep folding this way because they want to lean like that, which makes sense. But we'll see how that affects the overall outcome. Okay, now I'll be right back. Okay, all done, let's keep on going. I put the sticker over the repeat because we're just gonna start with the same corner. So let's get that same corner busted out really quick. One, two, one, okay. Now these two popcorns, I worked with the chain one, all the others I did not. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work out great. Mind blown. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna chain two, two double crochet in the space, double crochet in the next five, popcorn in the next. Okay, let's get to that point. So let's chain two, two doubles in the space. One, two, Double in the next five. We know these lyrics. We've heard this song. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, we're gonna work a popcorn in the next. One, two, three, four, Oh, I was working a cluster. Oh. <laughs> One. And I have a feeling where this is going to go, but maybe not. Unless we work a popcorn here in this middle double crochet. I feel like we're just going to work popcorns across, but maybe not. One. Two. Three. Four. And five, finish that stitch. No chain one. Okay. Five double crochet, popcorn in the next, double crochet in the next double. Double in back of popcorn and in following. Double po pico, so we are gonna work a pico in the middle, okay. So I have not chained one. We work a, d a double here. I said pico and I meant to say popcorn. We work a double. No, no, that's right. I worked a chain one over here. Work a double here. Work another double here. And then a popcorn in the middle stitch of our three double crochet we have here. One. 
two, three, four, and five. Nope. Then we work double, double, double popcorn. So three doubles in a row. One, two, and three. Yeah, I don't like that gap due to that chain one. So hopefully by the time I get over here, which I'll film this bit for you so you can see how that turns out. Now we work the popcorn. One, two, three, four, five. Then we just pick up those lyrics we're familiar with. Nope. No chain one. No chain one. There we go. Then we just work our five, two, cluster corner. Okay, so I'm going to work my way over. Of course, you work your two here, then you chain two and work the corner, just like we've been doing. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way over to those other popcorns, and we'll see how those work out. I will be right back worked myself over to that point. So I just finished my last popcorn, no chain one. I'm gonna work my three doubles in a row. One, you know, here is the top of my popcorn stitch. Here is the stitch I need to work into. That's two. And here is my first double crochet stitch. And that's three. Seems fine, seems perfectly fine. No gaps, okay, I'm sold, I'm sold. Life changed forever. You do not have to chain one to lock a popcorn in. It's such a habit. Oh, it's such a habit. One, two, and three. Work that next one, one, two, two, three, four, five, yeah, two, three, four, five. It's so much more seamless and clean, yeah, and it's more round. Have you noticed that the, the tops of them are more round than the tops of the ones where I was using the chain one? Isn't that something? Okay. And we just carry on with no chain one. Okay, I mean, I'm sold 100%. There we go. Looks great. All right, I'm going to finish this all the way around, and I'll be back for round uh, eight. We're on round seven now. Yes, we're on round seven, so I'll be back for round eight and then round nine. Okay, I'm telling you these colors, right? Like, the right yarn can take a simple pattern and zhuzh it up to something really special. Just give it a total glow up, because look at how gorgeous this is turning out. It is so pretty. Oh my goodness. I love the way this, I don't know why they stopped making it. It's so wonderful. Okay. Enough about that. Enough. I went ahead and started the first corner because so far every round has been that way. I looked at this round and yeah, it's the same way. So here we are at the repeat. We're going to chain two and work two double crochet into the space. One, two, okay, uh, double crochet into the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. And I already saw that it said popcorn in the next, so I'll go ahead and knock that out really quick. One. Two, 
three, four, and five. Okay, next five, popcorn, stitch, and next double crochet. Then we have a one double, double into the back, that's two in a row, and then a pico. Not pico, quit saying pico, Karina, popcorn. So we're gonna work two doubles, one, one behind the popcorn, two, and then it said to work one into the next. I don't think that's right. I read it wrong. Double in the next double, double in back of the next popcorn. No, okay. Double in back of next popcorn stitch and in following double. Okay, three doubles, three doubles in a row, just like before. Then we work the popcorn into the center of the three previous doubles. One, two, three, four, five. I haven't read it yet, but my guess is going to be three doubles in a row. One, two, three, followed by a popcorn. Three times. Yeah, it says to do this three times. Yes. Okay, so now we work a popcorn. I'll do that really quick off camera. Three doubles in a row, followed by another popcorn. One, two, and three, and then a popcorn into the fourth stitch over. Then we end the way we have been with five doubles over the five doubles, two in the chain two space, then chain two, and we work our cluster corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish working this all around. Really easy pattern, isn't it? Oh, I love it whenever a pattern is just a, a kind of breeze right on through. It's nice. Okay, guys, I will be right back. So basically, this is what we are looking for. A popcorn, three doubles, a popcorn, three doubles, a popcorn, three doubles, and a popcorn. So a total of four popcorns separated by three doubles. Okay, so I already started the last round, round nine, and I did read over it. It is exactly the same as round eight, but we're just gonna be adding two more popcorns. It's exactly the same. So I already started the cluster corner. I chained two, worked two doubles in the previous chain two, worked the five doubles over. Now it wants us to work one cluster here, one, two, three doubles in a cluster, one, two, three doubles in a cluster, and again, one, two, three, cluster, one, two, three, cluster. Right there, actually, cluster. Okay, so it's exactly, exactly like the last round we just worked. So rather than eat up a whole lot of film, I can just go ahead and do this really quick off camera. I'll be right back. I'm gonna show you the end result of this portion here because we've worked this so many times, you don't need to see me go through the whole motions of it. I'm just gonna show you a quick layout and then I'm gonna finish working it all around. Okay, so here is how round nine should look. One, two, three, let's pop you out a little more. Okay, one, two, three, four, five popcorns. So there we go. And everything else is the same. You're gonna work your five doubles, then the two doubles in the chain two space, then chain two, and work your cluster corners all around. Okay. And I did start a color change here. So it's going to that like sort of ashy gray color. Very pretty. Oh, I just love this yarn so much. Okay, I will be right back. Okay, here is the finished piece. I put a piece of paper under it so you could see it a little easier. There we go. And I retrieved the photo in the title and yeah, I nailed it. This one here is so nice. I'm gonna go ahead and make this pattern available. You know, I don't always do that with the mystery patterns, but whenever they are this nice, they are this good, I gotta make it available for you guys. It is a bedspread popcorn and cluster. 
Okay, this tells you how to make the fringe. Of course, it's always optional. Here is all the materials that we needed. And here it gives you the instructions on how to make the cluster and the popcorn stitch. And here is the finished product. So you would sew all these together just as is, and it would create these little diamonds with like little, little rosettes in between, these being the little rosettes. There it is. And there is that. Very cool. And of course you can, I used a much bigger thread. This is a size five. This is easily a size five. Um, you can use any size thread and hook you want and you can really make some big squares and knock this out fast. How cool is that? Okay, I had so much fun making this. Also, I wanna uh, talk about something else, my nails. So over the month of October, I wore these amazing sort of like starburst type nails. And a lot of people were asking me, what nail polish color is that and where can they get it? Well, as I have mentioned before, but I realize I have so many new viewers since I put out those videos about the girl I buy my nails from. These are all press-ons. And I buy my nails from a girl who has her own Etsy shop. She is a nail tech that creates press-ons at home and she does them by hand and she does them to order so she doesn't just have them ready to go once you order the nails she then begins making them as they are made to size i always leave a link in the description box where i buy my nails from and i do buy them she doesn't uh, her and I have no agreements, no arrangements, other than I did ask her for a discount code for you guys because so many people love the nails. So she does not pay me to do this, to wear them. She does not provide me free nails. I buy all of my nails. Um, but one thing I always recommend is for like something around $5, I think, she sells a nail sizing kit where she, she will send you all the nail sizes that she has available and you just try on the ones that fit and write down the number because she'll have the number on there of that size. Write down the number and that's your number. And you just have to buy that kit once. You just have to jot down those numbers once and every time you order, just pull out that paper with your numbers and give her your number so that she knows exactly what sizes are meant to fit you. And they do fit. They just look like they look like I came straight from the salon. And that's because these aren't plastic either. These are made with gels. She uses a pre-nails. Now, I also do my own nails. And on my Everyday Karina channel, I've, I have a couple of tutorials of me showing how I do my own nails. For years, I've been buying a pre-nails, way before I ever started buying from her. And I fell in love with her nails. I picked up a set and I realized, oh my goodness, these are a pre. These are my size. These things fit like a glove. And they do look salon quality. She hand paints all of her designs and it's, she just does a wonderful job. You can see the very little bit. I thought this would be cute for the winter time. Um, and she also takes special requests. And if you like a, a nail set that she has, but you want to change the color a little bit, like I, I need a lighter pink because of how fair my skin is. The, the other pink that she uses is a little too deep for me. So I asked her, do you have a lighter pink? And sure enough, she does. And it wasn't even a problem. She doesn't charge extra for that. She wants you to like the product. So her name is Golden 30 Nails. That's the name of her Etsy shop. She is a nail artist and or a nail tech. And she just does these press-ons, which I glue on. And I reuse them about three or four times before I can't use them anymore. And that's what she does. And so there you go. Of course, you will always find that link down below with a discount and free shipping. And that's just a gift from her to you guys. Again, this isn't sponsored. Her and I, she doesn't have any deals worked out with me. It was just a favor I asked of her. And she was thrilled to do it. Of course, she was thrilled. So I'll see you guys in the next mystery, which I'm going to start filming right now.